I've got a setup here where I put a grid of landscape format um, loosely drawn thumbnails up there and what I'm gonna do is go frame by frame uh, from a film and I've chosen Pan's Lab Labyrinth by Guillermo del Toro and uh, I'm going to go through and kind of reverse engineer the storyboard. So every time the camera changes, I'm going to do another thumbnail sketch. Um, you don't really need to see the film to be able to get the idea. But basically, I'm going to hit play, wait till the camera shot changes, do a thumbnail, and pause it and go from there. So we're going to start from the scene where she's about to open the little doorway she's drawn with the chalk outline. And all I'm going to go for in these thumbnails is just the rough... Um, the rough sketch of what's going on with the frame um, because a lot of the composition is going to be determined by the actual um, camera crew that's there in the moment but I do want to just get some of the key analysis in there and uh, you know, these don't have to be particularly developed at all. You just kind of want to get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so that's thumbnail one. And thumbnails don't have anything to do with value. Um, that's just the sketch. So, door opens. The It's a new scene. Now we're in the section for thumbnail two. So one of the things I want to be sure to notice is that the door is or the, at least the portal is kind of open and you can see into it. There's a little bit of linear perspective there. And you can see that the door is open. She's reaching her hand out, so her hand comes out here. Arms going back, her head in the window just a little bit. And she's kind of like looking through. She hasn't committed to making her way through yet, but that's it so far. Um, then we're going to hit play again, go to the next one. So one of the things that's happening with this shot is the camera is widening out and it's going to fade. So one of the things that we can do is kind of indicate um, some outward panning with some arrows one of the fun things about storyboarding is that you can uh, write transitions in as well so I'm going to write this is a fade to transition to the next shot Now we're in a linear perspective shot. We're just going to see her at the end of this room. So she is this little dot dead center, right, in the doorway. And she's surrounded by an arch. And this arch is coming back. She is the center of the linear perspective. Your horizon line's right here. So you can see these arches kind of going back in space throughout here. All these columns and so on. Next. Next shot is the chair. And she's placed the chair down to kind of get down through there again centered. See her hand reaching for the chair. Done. The camera is going to scroll up here. Next shot is close up of her grabbing a bag or something. So all it's really going to be is 
her hand coming out and grabbing this bag. You can kind of see the knee in the background. That's about it. So this might seem painstaking, but it's really kind of fun to go through and analyze what everyone's kind of doing with composition. Um, so far, a lot of the shots have been fairly centered. This is our first kind of off-center shot. So she's about to make the transition into a different world. She's looking down here, gathering her belongings. She's standing in the doorway, so the doorway is a little bit left of center here. Now we turn around on this linear perspective shot. The archway is now kind of to the left of center just a little bit. There's a progression of arches coming back. Except the twist is now that she's standing over here in front of the arch a little bit. And then she takes a look back, and this takes up the entire frame, just about see a little ledge. So we have a U-shaped composition here. And you just see the hourglass marking her time. Nice and dramatic shot. And you see a couple of other objects here in the background, but they're kind of dark and faint. Next we see the character kind of off to the left here. Exploring. And she's in this kind of archway with all these columns and everything. This archway is going off to the side. So she's in this kind of strangely curved room. There's columns over here. I would say overall she feels very confined in the space because it's all kind of hugging inward on her in this shot. Next shot, she's coming across a table. So here we see behind where our point of view is behind the character. She's looking out here and we mostly just see her in silhouette but there's a brightly lit table it's got all this stuff on it there's an archway back here you can see the back of the room and there's again another archway coming up here with columns and so on on either side Go again. Now she's walking by the table itself, so the table kind of gets the bottom third. There's objects on the table up close and out of focus. There's lots of stuff that you could eat and drink. She is standing back here. She passes by. There's some portals up in the ceiling. 
allowing a little bit of light and you see archways back here as well and columns and stuff too and next shot this will be the last one so this ends this shot basically scrolls this way up off to the right and it ends with a surprising shot of this strange figure sitting at the table and it's kind of weird and creepy looking it's got its hands out on the table its hands are kind of claw-like and odd strange back and then the main thing about this composition is her kind of like staring in surprise at this character so we can indicate an eye line here again archway in the background the little portal and again these repeated columns so that kind of binds this sort of sequence so there you go that's uh, let's see that's about 10 minutes for about two minutes of film or less or a minute of film so um, it doesn't take that long to go ahead and analyze a storyboard if you were gonna really get into it you would do value as well um, but as far as understanding composition and how to progress a story through film I think this is a really good exercise to kind of uh, try out now that we've kind of done the main analysis of the outline of the composition, I wanted to go back and do kind of more of a value analysis and kind of see um, how this film is working in terms of value. Because uh, I think that's kind of uh, important when you're doing any kind of compositional analysis. So I don't think we'll do like all of the frames necessarily, but we'll do some of them um, and just kind of see where everything falls. So there's a lot of darkness in this shot, in this initial shot, where she's beginning to open the door. There's just enough to kind of leave a little silhouette around her head, um, and her head kind of blends in with the background in a lot of the spots. Some really dark areas in here. Um, and we're just going to kind of do a two-tone sort of thing. There's some deep shadows around here. Um, where your hand is. So when we go to the next shot, and we're turned around and looking at her, there's a little more light in the composition. It's still pretty dark around her. She's getting a lot more light on her head though. There's some darkness here, and there's a lot of darkness around to the sides. So there's an interesting composition happening here where there's about 50-50 light and dark um, in this sort of compositional style. Most of it's dark. Or it just feels dark, even though most of it's not really. Okay, so if we go over to the next shot. So we have a sort of dimly lit hallway with a lot of natural light so along the sides of the hallway it's all pretty much dark um, it's not the darkest bit probably the, the ceilings quite dark but there are some portals in the ceiling that are uh, that are lit up there's four maybe five uh, four that you can see there would be more indicate a few spots of light and 
the back where she is is kind of dark too. Okay, next shot. Next shot is of the chair, and somehow the chair is mostly lit, but the rest of the shot is not lit very well. So this chair is almost entirely in darkness. Kind of interesting because it makes the chair into this kind of negative space thing. All right, so you kind of get the idea of how to analyze um, these these shots or to redraw the shots so that you get an idea of of what you're doing. Um, if you were to do a more in-depth study, you would potentially want to um, actually really render a little bit more and get some more facial detail into the storyboards. But I think this is good for what we're after, which is the overall compositions.